But Dr. Watt, one of the questions, we talk a lot about um, individuals in baseball, they're, they're really getting into uh, sports vision training, sports vision assessments. Um, and you're in Colorado, which is known as just, I mean, there's so many outdoor activities. And right now it's, it's February, so it's winter sports that are going on. Are you seeing any athletes in winter sports that are, that are coming in for vision, sports vision assessments? Um, not, not directly. So, as you said, Colorado, I mean, it's a hub of, of physical activity, and especially Colorado Springs. I mean, it's the home of the USA Training Center, Olympic Training Center. You know, we have three uh, military bases there. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of, of opportunity. It's the home of USA Volleyball, a bunch of other things. Um, you know, so there's a lot of opportunity. But... Right now, we don't see too many come in, especially winter sport athletes coming in directly now. We see a lot come in through concussion. And so they, you know, we have a couple uh, people, you know, from, from the USA Olympic Training Center, uh, ice skaters, figure skaters, stuff like that. They've, you know, in their practice, taken some falls and hit their head, and, uh, snowboarders as well, mm -hmm. and junior, junior Olympic snowboarders, uh, and even some national ones. That same thing that they're going through and going big and right. take a spill and, and have problems afterwards. Yeah. And so we, we see them starting there and then as we go through and get them better, then we kind of opens us up to that conversation to be able to say, hey, now, now that you're better, right. now what can we do to improve these skills uh, and give us opportunity, hopefully then pre prevent them from having concussions in the future. Yeah. One of the things that the American Optometric Association is doing, they actually have a traumatic brain injury task force and they're coming out with some white papers um, just to, to increase awareness about the visual aspects of post-concussion, looking at post-concussion vision syndrome. Um, obviously, Dr. Watt does quite a bit within, within that realm as well with post-concussion vision syndrome. What are some of the aspects of vision that you look at when you're working with patients that have uh, incurred concussion? Yeah, um, binocularity, getting their eyes to work together, one of, the, one of the, you know, that and tracking, those are huge in pretty much every sport. Uh, you know, there's most every sport requires a demand of depth perception. Getting your eyes to work together. If you don't have that, your eyes are not going. You're not going to have that depth, and it just increases your risk of injury in the future. And then the ability to track an object as you, as you're moving throughout it. And, you know, as we know in football, you know that's that's important as your wide receiver to go through and be able to track or your quarterback to go through and track all the players, all the pieces of the puzzle. Um, but it's just as important as a mogul skier who's going down. It has to be able to track his line that he's already mapped out and go through and then have that corrective body to go throughout that. Yeah. So, um, you know, every winter sport re requires those demands and, and it's just about being able to do that in a quick, efficient way. For sure. Uh, and if you don't have those visual skills due to a concussion, then you're not going to be able to do that. Right. Uh, totally makes sense. With, um, you know, University of Cincinnati, they came out with, as you know, uh, some studies that showed when they're doing vision training, uh, they, they do a vision assessment, they also do vision training, and their concussion and return to play was much faster than the rest of the national average. So I, I know there's no studies on this, but if we extrapolate it out, do you think if some of these uh, snowboarders and that were doing some of the vision training on the front end, do you think that could decrease their risk for concussion? 100%, yeah. I mean, you know, in that study, for example, right? I mean, you, you really get come down to two reasons. They were able to respond quicker with their body to be able to protect themselves so they didn't sustain as significant of a concussion, um, or that they were stronger so when they did break, they were able to get back quicker, right? And yeah, the, the same principles would be applied in any winter sport, that they would be able to respond quicker. And, you know, in a lot of the winter sports, uh, it's you know you versus the mountain. Uh, you know there's not a lot of other variables, and so it's being able to respond to that thing that happened on your last run. Right. Right. And uh, I wasn't that that didn't that wasn't there last time I was there. Now now I have to respond to that. Quickly, right? um, and that's and that's where it comes down to. It's it's all about the response time.